What up, guys? I, uh, I just got back from Boston. I started comedy out in Boston, and uh, flying out there, had a new experience. Uh, at the airport, I got called a guest of size. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what it was. I thought I wanted a shirt. I'm like, sweet, what's that? What's a guest of size? Uh, for those that don't know, if somebody says you're guest of size at the airport, uh, it means you're too fat to fit in one seat. <laughs> and you have to buy a second seat. Which is, it's fine, I get it. I'm a big dude, I'm 6'8". I weigh right around too much. Uh, <laughs> Or three much. Uh, and honestly, like when I think about it, like if I'm taking up more space, you know what? I think I should pay more. I'm totally fine with that. The only thing that bothers me though is it's not fair. Because like it doesn't work the other way. Like you're not gonna tell a short dude, uh, hey little buddy, <laughs> you're gonna save 50 bucks because we're gonna chuck you in the overhead. Doesn't, doesn't go that way. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell a blind person, hey, we have a movie on this flight, but since you're a guest of darkness, you're gonna get a discount. <laughs> but I gotta, I gotta do something to get in shape. I'm so fat and I'm getting older. I'm starting to notice the signs of getting older. Like, I used to carry condoms in my wallet, but I can't anymore, because now it's filled with like Tums and Rolaids and Zantac and <laughs> aspirin and all this other stuff I never needed before. And I, I think, I don't know if it's possible with getting older, like, I think I'm going through menopause. If guys can do that. Yeah, dude, I went and saw the movie 42 right when it came out. I went with my buddy and his wife, and we're watching the movie, and we're probably like 20, 30 minutes in the movie, and I felt something, and I just went, what the hell? <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I was like, Ugh, but I'm like, I'm leaving. I can't stop crying. And my buddy's wife, who's sitting next to me, she just glances over at me and goes, Oh my God, what is wrong with you? So I tried to play it off, I go, oh, I don't know, I think it's my allergies or something. She goes, allergies, really? When you're in the theater, what are you allergic to? Movies, you sissy. Which, I told her after the movies, I was like, that's not fair. I told her, unless girls play sports, I don't know if they understand how sports movies get us as guys. Because you do two a days and you collapse and your buddy's like, come on, Jay, don't quit, man, I got you, don't quit. Then we see those sports movies and we get emotional. I told her, I'm like, what's a, what's a movie that makes girls cry? And she goes, The Notebook, that is the movie. I'm like, that movie's a turd. That movie is awful. <laughs> For anybody that hasn't seen The Notebook, here's a quick recap. There's a lot of fluff, but here's what's happening in the movie. Girl meets a guy, they fall in love, but the family doesn't think he's right for her, so she moves away. She meets a second guy, they fall in love. They actually get engaged, they're gonna get married. But then the first guy shows up again, and she starts banging him again. And then goes, oh, by the way, fiance, I love you and everything, but this first guy, he is my true love, and I need to be with him. And I watched it with this girl, and she's like, oh my god, isn't that the greatest love story ever? I'm like, the, the movie about the cheating whore? Is that what you're talking about? Nobody cares about the fiance as long as the girl's happy, I guess, screw it. <laughs> like that is one of the most loved movies by women and if you just flip the roles, <sighs> that would be one of the most hated movies by women. Oh my God, I pray somebody remakes that movie and flips the roles. You can, you can call it the playbook. <laughs> Trust me, I don't profess to think I know women at all, trust me, but I think I figured a couple things out. It appears women seem to be happiest when they're being like a little bit slutty and or a guy's just totally getting screwed over. If you look at girls' favorite movies, that's the plot. You have The Notebook, it's about a cheating whore. What else? You have Sleepless in Seattle. It's about a cheating whore that's living with her fiance. She hears a dude on the radio, comes out to Seattle and starts stalking him. You wanna go old school, Casablanca. You guys will never believe what this is about. It's about a cheating whore that was married to Victor. She was gonna let him fly off till Humphrey Bogart's like, that's your husband, bitch, get on the plane. <laughs> what else, Twilight. It's about a cheating whore that's bouncing between some emo vampire and some dog beast thing. Uh, what else, Titanic. It's about a cheating whore that was engaged to Billy Zane. He took the bitch on a cruise. <laughs> she starts banging Leonardo, lets him die in the water. <laughs> oh, 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 pretty woman. She is 
She's a whore! She's an actual whore! It's not even a metaphor, she's a real whore! Like, <laughs> like the only love story over the last 20 years where the guy is not getting screwed over by his lover is Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> I gotta be with a dude not to get my heart ripped out? It's unbelievable. <laughs> and I, but I mean, to be honest with you, comics, it's not good to date comics. Like, comics are the worst. Because we just, we just want to get a laugh, whether it's on stage or off stage. And a, a perfect, and like, if you get comics around each other, all we want to do is try and one up each other on practical jokes. Uh, last month, I'm in a green room with two other comics. We're waiting for the show. And this other comic, Dean, walks into the green room hammered just stumbles in, he goes, what's up guys? We're like, hey, what's up Dean? He goes, not much, I got a new tattoo, you guys wanna see it? So we're like, sure Dean, show us your new tattoo. He goes, all right, hold on. <laughs> Lifts his shirt, undoes his pants, and drops everything, jeans, and, and we're all sitting down, so now we're eye level <laughs> with his personality, right? So, so immediately all of us are like, Jesus Dean, what are you doing? And they were like, all right, all right, Dean, show us the new tattoo. And he goes, oh, okay, it's right here on my arm. <laughs> oh, that is a perfect joke. It's got misdirection. It's a, it's a penis joke. <laughs> Little penis joke, technically. And, uh, and I play jokes, too. Like, I, I'm going to tell you this story really quick. I'm telling you up front, you're not going to like this story at first. I'm telling you up front, but it has a happy ending. Uh, me and five comics, we go to Vegas last year. We get to the airport, or we, well, we arrive in Vegas right around 11, go straight to the hotel. We check in at noon, get our key card. We come up to our room. We're walking into our room for the first time. As we walk into the room, over here on the beds are like girls high heel shoes and dresses, and over here is like luggage. So I tell my buddies, I'm like, oh, dude, we're in, we're in somebody else's room. We gotta get out of here. Right as we're about to walk out, I grab my two buddies and I go, hey, go, <laughs> go watch the door and just don't let anybody come in here for like five minutes. I go into these people's bathroom, I take the biggest dump I've ever took in my life. Relax. And then I don't flush it. Like, I leave it and then we leave, right? Relax. And at the time, I thought, ah, oh, it's funny to me, you know, whatever. Well, we go downstairs, they give us a new key. We come back up. They gave us the room right next to the room that I just destroyed. A couple hours go by, all of a sudden, we hear a bunch of girls coming in that room. So immediately, I'm like, guys, guys, they're back, get over here. So now me and all five of my buddies are just on this wall, waiting and listening. All of a sudden, you hear one girl just go, yeah, I don't know, maybe later we get a, oh my God! Lisa, Lisa, get in here! <laughs> Lisa walks in there and just goes, bitch, what are you, ah, what is that? Oh my God, that's disgusting, Ugh. And how is that moving? Ugh, I don't even get this. She goes, I don't understand this. Who would do something like, where's Becky? Becky! <laughs> now, I don't know who Becky is, but I think we all have a Becky in our group of friends. Like, like I'm Becky, that in my friends, it just gets blamed for everything. Becky walks in immediately, they're on there. Becky, did you do this? Oh, oh my God, no, I didn't do this. Becky, this is something you would do. <laughs> she goes, no, I didn't do it. Becky, if you don't fess up, you can't come on trips with us anymore. I didn't do it! There's five other girls here! Why are you just asking me? Becky, fess up! I didn't do it! Then you hear one girl just go, Oh, really, Becky? Really? So what? Somebody just came in here, took a dump, and then just left. And I'm on the wall like, that's exactly what happened. All right, guys, I gotta get out of here. Thank you.